This weekend, Virginia Republicans are holding an unconventional convention to pick their nominee to run for governor later this year. More than 53,000 people signed up to be delegates. On Saturday, they'll drive to one of just a few dozen polling places across the state. The state party chose not to hold a full-on convention because of coronavirus restrictions. Since Virginia is one of just two states that holds gubernatorial races in the year after a presidential campaign, it's often looked at as an early sign for where things are heading for the midterms. And that's where I want to bring in the National Journal's senior national political columnist, Josh Kraushaar. He's the author of the Against the Grain column. Josh, uh, good to see you again. Welcome back to Red and Blue. So you wrote that this race will foreshadow the national political future because, quote, if Virginia Republicans can't win by running against one party rule, it won't be easy for Congress Republicans to do the same. Explain the situation here for us. Yeah, there are a lot of parallels between the current national political situation and what's going on in Virginia. Virginia is currently governed by Democrats, both at the go go governorship and, and also in the state legislature. It's a red state that's turned quite blue in recent years. And the likely nominee for the Democrats is, is former Governor Terry McAuliffe, who is sort of a Joe, almost like a Joe Biden-like figure. He, he's someone who is an established presence as a former governor. He was moderate, a pretty pragmatic, moderate governor back about eight years ago, but he's moved to the left as he's gotten pressure from the progressives in his own party. And you've got the Republicans nominating their candidate this weekend, and they're making a big argument that they need a check on Democratic power in Virginia. That's a message you'll be hearing from congressional Republicans in about a year as they start campaigning for the midterm elections, trying to take back at least uh, one branch of Congress. So that the, the, what happens in Virginia is going to tell us a lot of, of information about where the national mood is, where the political temperature of the country is. And Josh, you spoke to a few Virginia politicians and strategists about this race. What are they watching in these campaigns? Well, Trump is, is the big X factor. Democrats are hoping to make former President Trump an issue. He is not popular at all in Virginia. He lost the state by double digits. Uh, they're hoping to tie whoever the Republican nominee is to Donald Trump. Republicans don't think that Trump is going to be as big of a factor, especially since we're talking about a governor's race. We're not talking about a race for Congress. Uh, Trump really isn't that familiar with Virginia politics. So while all the Republicans have tried to uh, pander, to, to, to align themselves with, with Trump in various ways. Um, I, I don't, they're, they're not expecting to be talking about the former president on the campaign trail. They want to make this issue about the, the race, about local issues like education, big, big issue about school openings percolating across Virginia. They want to talk about the pandemic and getting the economy back on track. So those are going to be issues that are really uh, driven by Republicans, no matter who the nominee is. Well, as you note in your reporting on this race, since 1977, Virginia has elected only one governor that comes from the same party that holds the White House. Interestingly, the governor who broke that streak is running again. Um, you touched on this, but how does Terry McAuliffe fit into this race? Well, he still has to win the nomination. Democrats holding a primary in June to determine their nominee. But McAuliffe looks like a very heavy favorite, and he's going to be a frontrunner. If he wins the nomination, he, Virginia's blue leanings are going to put McAuliffe in the spotlight. Um, I, I, you know, I think the big question is, number one, how far to the left does McAuliffe have to pander? Does he, I mean, the, it's a different Democratic Party uh, in Virginia than when he was first governor. It, it's moved to the left. The progressives are, are very ascendant and outspoken. So McAuliffe uh, has had to deal with a, a primary that's pushed him a little bit to the left. Can he kind of restore that middle ground that's that's held him in good stead politically? Um, and you know, and I also think that um, you know the, the big question is also who the Republicans nominate. Do they go too far to the right in their own nomination? Yeah. So let's look at the Republican primary candidates. What does the field look like, and how does this primary method impact things? It's an unusual method uh, of sort of a firehouse primary where you have 40 or so locations across the state where voters are going to drive up 
fill out a ballot. They're actually going to rank their top choices. They're not actually just going to vote for their favorite candidate like you usually do. They're going to rank their top choices, and that's going to play a role. It's, you're not, it's not just the first place finisher that's going to win. There's a ranked choice ballot that's going to have a sort of a complicated formula to, to, to determine the nomination. What's interesting in, in Virginia for the Republicans is you have some pretty establishment-oriented candidates. You have Glenn Youngkin, who's a very wealthy uh, former CEO of the Carlyle Group, a venture venture capital company. You've got Pete Snyder, uh, you know, a, a, a guy who started up his own business and, and also is spending millions of his own money. You've got the former State House Speaker Kirk Cox, who cut some bipartisan deals on Medicare, Medicaid expansion, on transportation with the Democrats in the legislature, and you have what a lot of uh, pundits are calling a Trump in heels, Amanda Chase, a very right wing state senator who is, uh, you know, one of the more, I guess, extreme candidates that is in the running. Um, any of the first three candidates are, are sort of your typical Republican. I mean, they, they've campaigned to the right, but they're pretty establishment oriented candidates. They have establishment backgrounds. Chase would give Virginia Republicans a whole lot of problems. Uh, she's not the favorite to win the nomination, but if she if she does well, it, it's going to create a lot of electability issues for, for the Republicans. All right. So much to watch. Virginia is such an interesting state. You know, the difference between northern Virginia and the suburbs there and, you know, just an hour or two down the road. It, it's it's amazing to see uh, the differences politically. Josh Kraushauer for us. Josh, thank you very much. Thanks, Elaine.